What's going on guys? We are finally at that part of this build that I've been looking forward to for a long time. We are building the turbo kit. This whole build already looks sick. But what makes this truck look super wild is gonna be having turbos hanging out both sides of it. Because who doesn't like a good set of turbos? So to start, we've got these up and forward turbo headers that I need to modify a bit. I've got a line marked here and you'll see the distance away from the V-band, I've got that mark. If you come around to this side, the mark is back here. So what's going on is, on the LS's, the headers aren't centered to the head. You've got this much distance behind on the passenger side, and it's right up flush to the front of the head. Well, on the other side, it's the opposite. So we're flush to the back here, and we've got this gap here. So the whole headers, they're offset from each other. I wanna try and make this whole thing as symmetrical as possible. So I don't want one turbo sitting further forward than the other. So that line, I basically laid a straight edge across the front of the motor. And if I cut it here and cut it there, weld the new V-band on, they'll be sitting the same distance forward on the motor. So I hate having to modify stuff that <laughs> looks fine. Uh, it's brand new parts and I have to cut them up. But to achieve some uh, symmetry, I need to do so. So I picked up some V-bands. So the other material we're using, this is all 304 stainless. It's all three inch for my uh, down pipe and the exhaust out the back. I'm using all three inch. I'm using two inch for my wastegate dump tubes. I've got some more three inch straights and two inch straight. These are actually the, the turbo mounts, the 90s that came with these headers, right? Which is kind of makes it a lot easier doing this whole job. I could have bought some T4 flanges and made my own uh, elbows, but you know these are very popular and they came with these headers, so I'm gonna use them. We are actually gonna be putting mufflers on this truck. If you actually consider these mufflers, they are mufflers, but you know, <laughs> how much are they actually gonna muffle? But I'm gonna make an attempt to quiet this thing down a little bit. I mean, my turbos are gonna act as mufflers. That'll help a little bit. Uh, so my neighbors aren't, uh, aren't super annoyed with me because uh, they've been putting up with my car for years and uh, this one's gonna be a little rowdier. For the wastegates, we are using the VS Racing 50 millimeter wastegates. And of course, my VS Racing mirror image 7070 billet wheel turbos. So I'm gonna pull these headers off, we're gonna get them cut up, we're gonna weld some new V-bands on them. So with the headers back on the truck and just using a couple tacks, I was able to manipulate the V-bands a little bit to make sure that they are perfectly square to each other. 
and I've got them lining up square this way and and I dropped it right around four degrees angled back so I'm a little I'm 3.8 the other side's four so this one's off by a little bit but it's so close you won't even notice and once you bolt the turbo on, the turbo's got a little bit of play too. So if I if one turbo looks like it's angled a little bit more than the other, I, I do have a little bit of wiggle room there too. But this will work. I can pull these off, do my finish weld around. Well, I just finished my first weld and then I ran out of gas. So I'm gonna have to run out and grab another bottle. But uh, she turned out pretty good. I'm not a professional, but I will take that. And I back purged. I got everything capped off with tin foil. I've got my argon hose flowing in there. So I shouldn't have any sugaring on the inside. Okay, so I'm gonna run out, grab some more gas, get the second one welded up and uh, We'll get some turbos hanging today. Tell me that doesn't look sick. <laughs> that looks awesome. I ended up trimming out part of the fender, which I was kind of thinking about doing anyway. The way this sweeps up, I just wanted to kind of keep it going. I can't keep the same radius. It is a little tighter, but uh, I need a little bit of clearance. I didn't want it touching, touching the fender. But uh, I got lots of clearance for my wheel. I turned the wheel all the way and uh, we don't have any, any issues there. Still got lots of room. But that is sick. And it's far enough back where my cold side's gonna come down behind the radiator now, which was a problem before.
But now the plan is we are going to come straight back off the turbo and we're going to try and follow the same profile if we can to a certain degree here. We're going to come back down and under the side of the cab. That's what we're going to try for anyway. Come across, down, under the cab, full exhaust, mufflers and all. guys this is turning out sweet I've got one v-band there now the reason I have a v-band there is the plan is to have basically a street mode and a race mode street mode full exhaust track mode undo the v-band simply remove this exhaust because I'm just gonna have one hanger back here where I can just slide the exhaust forward it'll unhook from the hanger and I can now make my truck probably about 40 pounds lighter 30 pounds lighter and uh, like combining both sides and I've got pretty much no back pressure at that point even though this is a pretty easy flowing exhaust uh, less weight better flow, more noise, <laughs> so that's the plan anyway. And I've got this section welded solid, both V-bands are welded full. I've got these next three pieces, well I guess you could say four, V-band, first section, my 45, and then this next section I already cut. I haven't welded the muffler to it yet, I'm going to wait, I'm going to weld these joints in full because stainless likes to move. So I don't want to tack the whole thing together, start welding out full, and every joint moves a little bit, little bit, little bit. And by the time you get to the end, I could be hitting the frame because it could throw the whole thing off by an inch by the time I get to the end. So I'm gonna do it in stages, weld this in solid, so if I have to adjust anything, I can do it before the muffler. So let's get welding. Quick weld check. 
All right, uh, yeah, it's got some color. There's the odd diamond there. It's just a mixed bag of change though for the most part. This is actually a lap joint along with this one and this one actually probably gave me the most trouble. Just looks like a bunch of boogers. It, the larger diameter pipe, because this slide inside that and the, the larger diameter pipe that was on the muffler just kind of kept burning up a bit. I kept trying to like reduce my heat and it still just kind of kept eating away and burning up and it didn't turn out the greatest. My butt joints though actually turned out pretty good for the most part. Just something to keep in mind. Just welding this stretch and the two V-bands on this piece, I have gone through a bottle and a half of Oregon. This is just like a two foot bottle, privately owned one. I've gone through a bottle and a half just doing this side. And at 85 bucks Canadian per bottle, it can add up. So keep that in mind if you plan on doing this yourself it can get pricey depending on how many welds you have to do. You're back purging, so that uses a lot of gas. So uh, it adds up. Just fair warning, if you haven't done this before, it adds up. And we're not even done this side. We still have to do the wastegate. So um, I, before I get to that, I have to put a hanger on this. So I'm gonna put a hanger on this then I can mount it back in place and we can start looking at where we're gonna mount the wastegate and run the dump tube for that. Alrighty kids, it's the next day. Just wanna show you here. I've got my hanger. It just took a piece of rod, bent it, welded to it. And then on the truck, all I did was I welded the bolt right to the frame and uh, I welded the washer in place there, or this one. Welded the washer in place so this thing can't slide that way any further, keeps it away from the frame. And then just use a nut, a nut and washer to keep it in place. So now I can just slide the exhaust in and we're golden. Hopefully it doesn't move around too much because this is close to the frame. I don't, I hope it doesn't sit there and whack the frame. And if it does, I'll have to figure out something else. But. For now, that's what we're gonna do. It's quick and simple, and I can remove this exhaust pretty easily. I also went ahead and welded in my O2 bung. Now, when this is on there, pointing down, the O2 bung's on the top side of the tubing, which is what you want, and I put it in such a spot where when I disconnect that section when I'm racing, and I wanna turn this out, it still ends up kind of on the top half, and it doesn't hit the header but it'll point out just like that. So now we can do the wastegate. So I'm using the 50 millimeter VS Racing wastegates. And I've decided I'm going to mount it right to this cast elbow. And she will sit just like that. It would have been nice to get further up here. So when all the air comes flowing through these headers, it's like a straight shot into the wastegate. But my intake tubing has to come down and it's kind of in the way. So I have to keep the wastegate further down so I can sneak by with my, my uh, cold side. So we're gonna go right there Pretty easy to run that tube straight back. The hardest part might be drilling this. I've never had to drill a hole like that through cast. So we will find out just how difficult this is gonna be. It might eat up a hole saw or two, but I'm willing to sacrifice a few of them. But let's see how it goes. actually drilled way easier than I thought. Bolting it to the table really helps. So if you have a table like this, bolt that sucker down. It actually uh, torched through there pretty good. 
I'm gonna throw it back on there because I do have some adjustability here. I thought about drilling this hole smaller than, than this diameter, than two inches, but uh, my next bit down was one and three quarters and I just didn't like how small that was. Um, but this actually fits pretty nice. But I can change my angle if I want to. So I wanna put this back on to make sure I have my angle right. And then uh, we'll get the piece cut and weld it in. And there we have the finished product. Wastegates mounted, little dump pipe, full exhaust with muffler, and dumps off just behind the cab. Stoked with how this turned out. My welds are definitely getting better. You know, definitely practice makes perfect. I'm not perfect, but I'm getting better. And uh, that's what I like about this kind of project. You just keep getting better. And I love how it turned out. I love everything about it. I love that I can remove this section of the exhaust and turn this out for when I go to the track. Just love it. Love how it looks. But that was actually a pretty quick and simple exhaust to build. It's a lot easier not having to root it in, you know, over a rear axle, between an engine, or between the transmission and frame, all that kind of stuff. This was actually very simple, being on the outside of the frame, tucking under the side of the cab. And uh, yeah, much easier to uh, do than the car was. But uh, I mean, that wraps this up. I still have to do the passenger side. Uh, no, no sense filming that because it's gonna be the exact same thing I did on this side, uh, minus the O2 sensor. Now, if you like what you see here, hit the subscribe button. It makes it a lot easier to follow this whole project. And uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun so far and it's gonna keep getting better. So hit the subscribe button, follow this build, and uh, we're gonna make something cool in the end. See you later.